A new rice variety is here. Grows faster, doesn't spoil. A big leap from India. Hello friends. In India alone, more than 1.4 billion people eat rice almost every single day. And across the world, nearly 3.5 billion people depend on rice as a primary food. For crows of farmers, rice is not just a crop, it is their livelihood, their income, the survival. And now, something big has happened here. India has created a new kind of super rice, a magic rice. A rice whose genes are edited. Yes, genetically edited, modified. A rice that doesn't spoil easily. A rice that grows faster, needs less water and stands strong even during heavy rains and floods. Yes, scientists have literally redesigned rice in the lab. These new varieties were released a few months ago and now they have already become a success story. And not just rice, similar research is starting on mustard and many other crops. So gene editing, GE, is about to play a major role in India's agricultural story and future. So what exactly is this lab-made new magic rice? Why is India creating it? despite opposition from outside and from within what are the benefits what are the risks and how will this reshape indian agriculture let's explore everything in this today's video watch till the very end don't miss it a new rice variety is here two ge varieties launched Yes, to push gene editing in India, the central government has launched these new rice varieties. Now, many people may become confused when they hear gene editing of rice. What is it exactly? We will explain everything in detail in a bit. But first, the varieties. One variety is called Kamala and the other is called Pusa DST Rice 1. PUSA DST Rice 1. Among these, the DRR Dhan 100 or Kamala variety has been developed by the Indian Institute of Rice Research IIRR in Hyderabad. The Pusa variety has been developed by the Indian Agricultural Research Institute IARI in Delhi. Both these varieties have been developed from very common rice types, Samba Masuri or BPT5204 and Cotton Dora Sanalu or MTU1010. Friends, this Samba Masuri is nothing new. In Karnataka, we call it Sona Masuri. And in Andhra, they call it Bangaru Thigalu. And now, using the same paddy variety, scientists have edited the genes and developed this new version. Not just that, these two varieties have already shown very good yield. Across the country, more than 100 tests have been conducted on them. Reports say that even under harsh climatic conditions, these varieties are giving good yield. So what exactly is this editing? A lot of people may wonder, can you really edit rice genes? Yes, you can. But to understand that, we need to understand genes and gene editing in a bit more detail. Friends, you have all heard of DNA, right? DNA is a molecule that present in the cells of living beings, plants, animals, birds, humans, insects, all living things have DNA. This DNA contains all the instructions on how the organism should develop, how it should function, how it should survive and how it should reproduce. It is like the software code of a living organism or body. A part of this DNA is called a gene. If DNA holds the complete information, a gene holds specific information. To compare, if DNA is a book, a gene is one chapter inside that book. Gene editing means making a specific change in the DNA. Here, a particular portion of the DNA's genetic material is either removed or modified. If you want me to simplify it even further, imagine DNA is a long sentence. 
you search for the spelling mistake in that sentence. Erase it and write the correct spelling again. That is exactly what we call gene editing. Just like you use a pen to edit your written sentence, for gene editing, scientists use special tools. These tools include CRISPR or CRISPR, TALEN or TALEN, and ZFN or ZFN. Now, when it comes specifically to rice, this editing happens in several stages. First step, scientists identify which gene in the rice variety controls which trait. For example, the WX gene decides the grain quality and starch quality. Similarly, DP1, G1A genes decide the yield. At this stage, they decide which gene needs to be changed. Next, second step, they prepare an RNA molecule that matches the target gene. This RNA works like a GPS for the CRISPR tool. The third step, they inject the CRISPR CAS9 package into the rice cells. CAS9 is a protein that behaves like scissors. RNA is the map. Fourth step, DNA repair. The unwanted gene is cut and removed. And now, if a new gene has to be added, it is inserted using methods like the gene gun or biolistics method. Here, in the gene gun method, the new gene is coated on gold or tungsten particles and shot at high speed into the target cells. The cells then absorb the new genes. But remember, not every time this happens. Sometimes they don't add any new DNA at all. They simply make small insertions or deletions in the existing DNA. This is done using SDN, Site Detected Nucleus Technique. And we, I mean India, used the SDN1 technique for creating the DRR Dhan 100 or Kamala Rice variety. If you look back, there was a time when even the name gene editing made governments panic. There was massive opposition to engineered crops. In fact, even now in India, only BT cotton is allowed among genetically engineered crops. Everything else was banned, but now those restrictions are slowly being relaxed. Across India, from agriculture to medicine, research is being allowed now. Top agricultural universities are running experiments. The government is bringing policies to support this and is funding scientists. Now, when it comes to benefits, first thing is paddy yield increases. This is the main reason behind gene editing. Scientists add genes that help the plant absorb nutrients better. They also modify genes so that the panicle can hold more grains. So the yield goes up. Second, higher resistance to pests and diseases. This reduces the need for pesticides. Third, better tolerance to climate stress. For example, the SUB1A gene helps the plant survive two weeks underwater. The OAS NEC14 gene helps the plant survive longer during drought. Fourth, higher nutritional content. Fifth, these varieties grow faster than normal paddy. Normal paddy takes three to four months, sometimes five to six months depending on the variety. But here, gene edited varieties mature a bit faster. That is why the government is focusing on them. So then, why is there opposition? Friends, not just in India, worldwide, many people oppose gene editing. And according to them, there are serious reasons. When you edit a plant's genes, you cannot guarantee the outcome. Plants undergo mutations. They adopt to their surroundings. If unexpected mutations happen, the damage could be more than benefit. Another major danger is if gene edited crops cross-pollinate with natural varieties, it may create a new uncontrollable hybrid. Because these G plants already have traits like surviving with less water, resisting insects, resisting pesticides. If such a plant spreads unchecked, no animal eats it and no pesticide kills it, it can become a parthenium-like weed, a huge ecological disaster. Critics also say gene-edited crops may destroy local plant diversity and traditional crop varieties. We have seen this before. In 2009, India approved BT Brinjal, but in a year, in 2010, it was completely banned. Opponents said it was approved without proper testing 
and long-term health effects were not studied. Concerns were raised about allergies and long-term impact. But the same BT brinjal was launched in Bangladesh. People, they still grow it. It gives around 42% higher yield and pesticides usage has reduced by 56%. So there are strong arguments for it and strong arguments against it. Now, what do you think on this? Tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and especially please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is very, very important for us, especially for a new channel like us. Thank you so much. Let's meet again. Keep looking for better. Namaste.